Lewison. Sir, the amendments introduced under both bills will facilitate access by voting to voting by voters overseas and in nursing homes, improve transparency in election advertising and strengthen election processes. I am of course glad to speak and I have clarifications in three areas. My first area of clarification relates to election advertising requirements. First, the definition of publish will be amended to include forwarding and sharing content. Given the ease of forwarding and sharing content on the internet, it is not difficult to fall foul of these provisions. A number of provisions provide that the prosecution does not have to prove that an accused knew or had reason to believe that the content included election advertising. There is a general defence for the accused to prove that he or she did not and could not reasonably have known of the offence and took all reasonable steps and exercised all due diligence. If interpreted strictly, this defence can be difficult to establish. Specific to election advertising, can Minister clarify whether it will be a defence for the accused to prove that he or she did not in fact know that the content included election advertising? For instance, since the meaning of content includes hyperlink and items that, that store data electronically, would it be a defence for the accused to prove that he or she did not access the hyperlink or folder? While the public should of course responsibly share information online, there is also a difference in culpability between a lay person who carelessly forwards messages and links to a friend and a political operator looking to influence the elections. Can Minister share how the enforcement of the provisions relating to publication of election advertising will be taken into account, will take into account the differences between these two scenarios? Second, the bill states that election advertising must include the, the identity particulars of persons who authorise making available to the general public the, advertise, the advertisements and who directed the election advertisement. Can Minister provide some examples to clarify the difference between authorising and directing an election advertisement? Third, publish will exclude any communications or content between two or more individuals that is of a private or domestic nature by electronic means. Can Minister clarify what private or domestic means, given that a chat on WhatsApp or Telegram can range from two, part two participants to thousands? Further, can Minister clarify how publication provisions will apply to a situation where communications of, of content between two or more individuals that is initially private or domestic in nature is subsequently forwarded on a wider scale? My second area of clarification relates to the penalties for breach of election advertising requirements. It will be an offence to publish or publicly display election advertising that does not include the required information. Those convicted of the offence will be barred from voting for seven years and the court will have no discretion to reduce the sentence. This is extremely harsh. Under the current Parliamentary Election Act and Presidential Election Act, other so-called corrupt practices that similarly attract a seven-year ban include offences of making a false statement in relation to a candidate to affect the elections or making a false declaration as a candidate. Election advertising should be transparent, but the failure to include required information in election advertising may be caused by honest mistakes. Such offenders are clearly less culpable than offences, offenders who deliberately refer information or provide false information. Can ministers share if individuals will be given an opportunity to correct breaches of election advertising requirements? Can ministers also share the rationale for the need to make the seven-year voting ban a mandatory sentence? My third and last area of clarification relates to the special polling arrangements at nursing homes. The amendments will allow special polling arrangements and mobile polling to be arranged to facilitate voting at nursing homes. A person in charge of a nursing home may inform the mobile polling team that a visit to an inpatient or resident is forbidden on medical grounds. The mobile polling team is then not allowed to visit or take the individual's vote. Given that this effectively means that the individual will not be able to exercise their vote, this provision gives the person in charge significant powers. Can ministers share what safeguards are in place to ensure that the person in charge exercises such powers responsibly? For instance, will a doctor's report be required to substantiate the medical grounds for forbidding the visit by a mobile polling team? Will the wishes of the resident to vote be taken into account? More generally, the returning officer is required to consider the conditions of electors, practicality and other particular circumstances in deciding whether to set up special polling stations and mobile polling teams. These are highly fact-specific questions that require an understanding of the residents and healthcare knowledge. In 2021, there were about 80 public, private and not-for-profit nursing homes.
Can Minister share how the returning officer will make an informed assessment individually specific to all nursing homes? Will the returning officer be required to seek the advice of medical and ger geriatric healthcare professionals in ensuring that any polling arrangements are appropriately made? So notwithstanding these clarifications, I stand in support of both bills.